Hello, what's happening everybody, and good morning. We're playing some more City Skylines today. Gonna start a new city. Got a bunch of learning done yesterday, so let's uh, pick a map and head on in. Before we get started though, give me a comment with the final here in chat and your wonderful support. So it's spelled backwards. Griffin, Bit, Enos, good to see you. Fabi and Shane, Carthos, Dual Ghost, Mythic Applesauce, Slimy Yoshi, Zunkar. And there's C6 Zombie, Dope Fish. Goss 6, Reinbolt, Sofa Meyer, either Wall Street Sloth, Adrian Bauer, Atropol, Fabian, it's good, Tharson, and all the rest. Hey, before we get kicked off here, Sofa Meyer, thanks for 50 months, Griffin Bit, thanks for making it official with Prime, and Wall Street Sloth, thanks for 43. Neat. Let's go for uh, Garden Rivers. All right. Well, you can click left hand traffic. That's cool. I don't know. Now I'm thinking, ooh, these are all water ones. Neat. That's fun. Oh, choices. Let's go for uh, farmland flats here. Hey, what's up, Sergeant Grumps? Good to see you, Fred Step. Hey, Femoral, thanks for a tier 306 month subscription. Hey there, Zippoli. Jared, good to see you as well. Uh, custom map theme, I don't think we have any of those installed. There's not very much water on this one, that's kind of an issue. Let's go for the Meandering River. Oh, there's so many good choices here. They're all a little bit randomized within what they are, too, as far as what appears there. All right, let's go for the, uh, the mountain taper. City name's fine for now. All right, not going to do too much different this time. Just going to build it up a, a little slightly different. Yesterday was all about learning about a lot of the features and stuff. Still got a lot of input to go. And as always, if you have any suggestions or input, you're more than welcome to make your suggestion. Just do keep in mind as some of my first streams of this game that uh, may not be able to process or be in a position to receive your uh, suggestion. But I do appreciate it. Hey, so Dishnick, thanks for a 51. Appreciate that. Time off was good, thank you. All right, first step here, I'm gonna turn this off. Okay. It's a pretty cool looking biome. I like it. Okay, this one has a train going right through the middle, huh? Fair enough. Okay, where's our water sources? Let me just unpause here real quick. Which way is the water flowing? Going down this way. Hmm. Which way does this go? Is this like a, this is a lake, huh? Almost looks like it'd be a good, uh, good one for inland water. Oh yeah, that's going to be interesting. 
don't know about this map, man. Hold on. Yes, we're using all of the DLCs. Generally, if I play a game on stream, I'll have all the DLCs installed. Okay. Go for the Biomes Valley. Ortberg, what a name for a city. Hey, T. Recal, thanks for 102 months. Thank you. This looks pretty cool. Let's take a look around here, though. Oh, yeah, this is a real cool map. I like this one a lot. Let me uh, go over here. Let's check out... Oh, I can't check anything yet, huh? Fair enough. Fair enough. Get some tunage going here. Let's just toggled. Okay. Uh, we'll go for some jazz this morning. At the Forest Foundation, we care about three things. Tree things, nature things, and the third thing, bird things. The homes of native birds are being destroyed at an alarming rate. That's why our goal is to give a birdhouse to every bird. All right, first let's figure out where we're going to put our our resources here. Invited birds indoors with the rest of us. Do your part and text Dirty Birdie to 3030 to donate a bird bath to 30 birds. Okay, which way is this river flowing? This way, so we're going to put wastewater here for now and then we'll move that later. Trying to think right now which way I'm going to expand first. Uh, probably left. Let me go ahead and make a DLC command here since it's such a common command. There we go. Okay, one thing I've decided here is I do want to uh, take the road. Okay, I don't even have four, four uh, tile road yet. I want a big old highway to start. Okay, let's go here. Okay, is this a, okay it's got to go two up there. Fair enough. So, I'm going to build, uh, I think, Old Town over here, but let's just build this straight down to uh, almost the river, and then we're going to cut off. Uh, what I want to do here is leave enough room to uh, have ways to go back to the highway. On my previous city, I built in, like, right here. It doesn't leave enough room to do stuff later. So, I want, I'm going to build on the corner of the map, and perhaps this corner of the map. Oh, industry down here is probably good. Let's put the city here and then uh, go from there. Okay, no page down.
There's a lot to spend on roads early, but that's okay. As long as we get our infrastructure set up, we're good. Okay, well, I feel good about that. Yo, Garce Gonza, thanks for six months. Much appreciation. Oh, we already have a bridge installed? That's cool. Alright, so which way is the traffic here? Here we got wind going on. Okay, interesting. We got a, a section of... Is that wind or water? Okay, that's literally wind up here on the hill. So that's where we'll put our uh, our power. Okay, this is coming in the city. This is going out. Or we can fix that up later. Let's do a, uh, it's kind of a custom road here. I'll put it at uh, 150 degrees. I'm gonna curve it right around the bend here. Actually, no. Let's start this road right here. Not quite. Did a right click there. We're just going to start with this for right now. Keep it simple. All right, let's get some electricity going. Uh, as we saw here, that this is a pretty nice area. Right up on the hill here. I'm going to put down uh, two of these, in fact. Okay, which way is our water going again? Okay, water's flowing this way. Uh, so we're going to grab the water pump. We're going to put it right here at the edge of our map. Okay, that's where water services begin. And then they're going to end down here for now. Okay, so we're pumping water out right here. Okay. Okay, water's connected. Let's just connect it to the junction right here. Do a small pipe here. Okay, our city has water. Uh, now we need to put down power lines. Good news, this shouldn't be too bad. Don't need too many. And if we build this out properly, it shouldn't be too bad. Let's just connect uh, right here. For now. Okay, I also need to get power over to this thing. Uh, is there any good uh, wind over here? That's not bad. I could put a, even a, a turbine on this side if I wanted. 
Oh, this area looks awesome for uh, getting more power. Okay, what's it saying isn't connected? Okay, it's not connected to anything because there's not anything built there yet. Okay, let's go from here. Oh, we can go across the water? That's cool. There we go. I guess that definitely makes sense. That looks a little haphazard right there. Just a little bit. Okay, well, uh, to begin, let's just zone a little bit of residential here. We're going to do this right on top of the, uh, the power line, right? Uh, what's going on here? Paint. Okay, marquee. Okay, I see that works. Neat. Huh. Oh, I see, I see. Alright, we'll just begin with that. Uh, Kosera, you're more than welcome to make any suggestions about the game. Uh, you can freely discuss game mechanics as well. Uh, just do understand, since my first time playing the game, I may not be in a position to parse or receive your input, though you're more than welcome to talk about your game knowledge. Uh, game discussion is open here. As long as you're not being overly demanding that I do a specific thing, we're going to be all good, and I appreciate you sharing your knowledge. All right, we got uh, a lot of negative income here. That's fine. Uh, it's going to ask us to zone some other stuff here pretty soon, so let's just go ahead and get that going. I'm going to use this tool here. Let's just um, round this out over here. Let's put a little uh, little shopping on this side. I'm hesitant to build some more roads right now because uh, roads all cost. Put down, but we'll build a little road over here, huh? Just a little one. All right, for the moment, I'm just going to connect uh, this back in. Can I loop this highway? Yes. No. No. There's no way out of the city right now, which is an issue. Yes, why would anybody want to leave this paradise? Indeed. Indeed. Alright, I can fix this later. I just want to need to, for the moment, at least give these guys, uh, you know, a way in and out of the city. That seems like a good idea. Sorry about that, city goers. I don't even think that's going to work. What have I done? Do I have access to roundabout right now? I do. How much does this thing cost? 
2650. Okay. I'm gonna pause my game real quick. Safe to say I done goofed. Not a very good angle. Let's delete this section, actually. There we go. some humble beginnings here. Are they really without power? Did I destroy the power line on accident? I did. My dang. All right, we'll fix up this junction later. I just want to make sure traffic can actually flow. Gonna build the industry up here by the highway actually for now. Okay. Bring the whole family to at the old grain mill, old fashioned family restaurant. At the old grain mill always has the best service and the best home style meals in town. We'll make sure you always leave at the old grain mill with a smile and a full belly. Now, be sure. Yo, broken perfectly. Thanks for 50 months. Appreciate that 5 0. Thank you. Family restaurant and not the abandoned grain facility at the edge of town. It's not safe for visitors and poses serious risks to anyone who dares enter that old mill, which was forced. All right, hold on real quick. We're going to save our game. Close down years. Okay, got that one. And then I'm going to go back to the menu and just reload the map. Bring the whole family to at the old grain mill, old fashioned okay. family restaurant. At the old grain mill always has the best service and the best home style meals in town. We'll make sure you always leave at the old grain mill with a smile and a full. All right, it's gonna take some time for this to build up, so let's just uh, let's just accelerate time here real quick, get some jobs going. Family 
restaurant and not the abandoned grain facility at the edge of town. It's not safe for visitors and poses serious risks to anyone who dares enter that old mill, which was forced to close down years ago. We ordered our sign and uniforms before we learned of the existence of that dangerous... Oh yeah, they probably want power over at the industrial area. It's fair. There on that awful, awful night. We just want to focus on making great meals every night. I was going to connect it like this. At the old grain mill. Old fashioned family restaurant at the old grain mill. Can get rid of those after we have the rest of the stuff on the highway built up. This is all that jazz. Well, my manager wants to remind you that we also play funk. We already have the Inland Water Treatment Plant. Okay, Inland Water Treatment Plant extends the water service and includes cities built far away from open water sources, processes and drains the wastewater back into the ground. Cool. angle on this a bit weird. I'm going to fix this whole section later, but right now we're just going to call this Old Town. Alright, let's go ahead and add just a little more housing here. It's a smidge. Nice. Hashtag fishy. These houses are finished. I want to wait till we're in the green till I start building out the neighborhood roads here. Though I think uh, let's go ahead and put some more houses here on Raymond Street. You can now make any zone building historical to preserve its visual appearance by checking the checkbox all right cool yo mr sinister six thanks for 51 months thank you hey you look nice today thanks for three months man appreciate that A smidge more here. Just a smidgen. Alright, look at that. We're in the green. Oh, I installed a mod for uh, no fog between today and yesterday. What's this? Oh, a little archway. Cool, cool. and go down here um what is this one clear traffic no parking restrictions lane arrows lane connector vehicle restrictions okay so i can literally uh decide what kind of vehicles can be on the road that's cool that's cool Junction restrictions, speed limits, okay. Manual traffic lights, time traffic lights, priority signs. Take a look here. Um,
Oh, I see. That's the other way. Okay. So these roads aren't one way. I see it now. Okay, let's take a look at traffic here. Really, this road should be uh, one way. This as well. I suppose that doesn't really matter, but if this was was one way, we could get two lanes of traffic going uh, there. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so these started as one way, and then I built a non-one-way traffic. I see. We'll replace those in a little bit. That's a problem for later meat. Let's also remove the parking restrictions on the roundabout here. No parking in the roundabout. Does somebody not have water here? What's going on with that? Oh, it's just telling me this exists. Gotcha. Don't need inland water treatment right now. Thank you. Debating where I want to build next. I think I might actually like uh, start over on this section. We can just have this kind of be where it is. And connect the electricity over the um, over the railroad. Well, as soon as we reach uh, five hundred. It's going to cause some problems. Let's go to chill here for a minute. I'm going to look at the outside of our map here, too. Yeah, I know you guys want workers. I got it. I got it. Cool train, dude. All right, let's go ahead and build uh, some more roads. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and replace these with one way while I'm thinking about it. Okay, we do have four lane road unlocked now. Six lane, one way road. $80 a cell, 0.96 a week a cell. All right. All right, tell you what, this is going to be like the, the old town district here. I'm going to I'm gonna fill this in for our city, and then I'm going to start building out here with um, some larger roads. We'll uh, come back to this in a moment. So let's just build a two laner out here. a little close to the edge. Mm, let's use our move it tool. Grab this junction right here. Cool, cool. That looks like a real city street. A little bit wonky. Yeah, you guys want water service. That's fair. That's fair. What's this? Advisor. Build roads and zone next to the last citizens move in. Got that. Or there. Alright, now we want a little more services. 
Little shopping center. Let's make this little shopping center in here, huh? Take our small tool and dezone this. Industrial zone. Let's uh, get it zoning. I'm going to call this for a moment a kind of a closed loop. And then what I plan to do is rebuild this section later. This is going to be like the, uh, the historic neighborhood district. Okay, cool. We're making good money here. I'm gonna uh, just chill here for a minute and let my cash go up a bit before we have to worry about garbage services and stuff. We'll just kind of chill for a moment, watch the city work. Yo, prolific one. Thanks for 47 months, almost four years indeed. Uh, not too bad psychosis i guess the main downside of doing that is you immediately lose uh some people when you demolish the road or upgrade it so uh there's definitely some forethought going on there or should be let's change stations now It'd be very nice if we could stay right below uh, 500 people. Let's in fact uh, demolish a house or two. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Yeah, public transport is definitely good in this game. All of the uh, options in the game are pretty realistic. Uh, I know everybody tries to fight traffic in this game, and it's definitely something you have to work on. Um, but there isn't a city in the world that doesn't have traffic issues. It's just uh, how it be. Oh, okay, it rezoned it. Got it. Okay, hold on. Let's dezone this. Right there. We'll rebuild these later. And there's lots of options to manage traffic. We're also using a, a mod which allows us to do a lot of modifications to roads for parking restrictions and other things. All right, how is our, uh, let's see, water services here? Okay, we're looking great on that. What about electricity? Yep. We're going to need more electricity. Before we do anything else, in fact, let's just put down uh, the electricity here. How much is the coal plant? 19,000? Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, let's try to keep it green. Yeah, exactly, Dindy. So we're, uh, as soon as we have 500 people, it's going to be, um, we have to do garbage services and other stuff. So I'm just letting it tick for a minute so we can get a little money built up. Um, not a big deal to take out a loan, but 
while, while we're here, I'm just going to build it up a little bit slower. It can take a long time for things to happen in-game as far as buildings being built and uh, populated and all that stuff. So we're just chilling for a minute. Okay, let's take a look at our zones real fast. So I do want to fill in the zones uh, here. And then we're going to connect this area to this side. And this is going to kind of be the main first build. And we certainly don't have access to taxes or anything yet, do we? Oh, hey, I can lower the uh, the budget for water here by a lot. Sure. Electricity, let's go ahead and lower the road budget for the moment, too. Yo, Samurai Hamster, thanks for 54 months. Much appreciation. Okay, let's go ahead and build uh, another house or three here. Just a couple. Good old Portburg. Okay, we can change the name of the city if we want to at any time. Oh, cool, you got workers and households. Neat. Thinking right now about this section, how I want to build it out. I think after we get this filled in, though, we're building here, and then we're going to build over here. Maybe extend industry out this way. Make sure our industry has access or ready access to both sides of the highway. Right now, at least, industry can go around the roundabout to get to the other side of the highway. That's good. Yes, I will build more residential. Don't worry, game. Don't worry. Got a plan. Thanks for that confession there, Rosemary Wilson. Just like to watch fires. It's fine. Just don't start any. Okay. What's our electricity look like at night? Okay, we're at 31 right now. Not bad. Not bad. Hey, Yukon Wildass, thanks for 60 months. Appreciate that five years. Good morning, Glitch. Good to see you. All right, as soon as we hit uh, 50,000, I'm going to expand pretty aggressively here. won't be too long now got a nice little town here is gonna keep it cool for a minute a 
will also slow down the timer. That water texture is mesmerizing. Yeah, this area is going to have to be rebuilt. This roundabout is, uh, <laughs> well, it's there. Almost to our 50k goal, and we're going to build some more houses. All right, let's go ahead and slow this down here, too. Yo, Darklight, thanks for 55 months. NWC Tim, thanks for 92 as well. 100 Cotton, thanks for 61. Appreciate all that support. Thank you. All right, little Hamlet. That's us. Congratulations. How am I going to connect all of this for the garbage? Yes, I know you guys want garbage services. That's definitely fair. That's definitely fair. Now that we're here, I'm going to uh, replace these. Interesting. It's a six lane, one road highway, so we can't do that. It's too... Why can't I upgrade that to four? 
What? Why is that covering both sides of the road? Interesting. Gotta do this first. Also, where do I toggle which way the road goes? It's fine. The right click? Okay, right click. Now if I go four lane, no, it still says it's connecting both sides of the road. Interesting. Wonder if I was meant to deviate the road out further beforehand. Yeah, so I can't upgrade both sides at once with the way I built this road. That's tough. Okay, well, that's a problem for future me. Yeah, for future poor bird, we can we can rebuild this entire section, no problem. So even if we're not upgrading. No, we're still on upgrade, gotcha. All right. Zone a little bit more residential here. Finish out this neighborhood. Okay, so I'm going to start the road out to garbage services and stuff over here. Um, and then we're going to rebuild this section with like a big old um, roundabout and stuff later. But for the moment, I just need like landfill services. For a curvy road, let's get like a decent looking off ramp here. No, a little higher up. Right here. Go at 53. No, that's not quite the right angle now, is it? Go 40. Even more? 29? Oh. For the moment, let's go ahead and connect the power here as well. Not yet. Alright, so how is this going to connect back onto this side of the highway as well? Does that matter currently? It does. Because right now they can only get in here. There's no way for... Um, anything to get over to this road.
All right, so cars come in here. Okay. I feel like I'm overthinking this right now. So basically we need a way from this side of the road for the cars to come back up and get over to the other side. Okay. I'm going to delete the... junctions on this and just make my own make a little overpass all right let's just get rid of these also can i just upgrade this to a four lane is that a thing i can do by golly i can okay cool I didn't realize that yesterday I can uh, just upgrade the uh, the roundabout after placing it there. It's good. Bless it. I just don't like the way that looks. Okay, so I literally can't do it from there? Oh, man. So, we were on upgrade. That's maybe why. Okay, we're good. We're good. Is this where my city started? No. Let's just begin by making this a four lane. <laughs> All right, one more time here. Start by going out just a little bit, just a little bit. And do the same thing on the other side. There we go. section that curves here. Okay. Now we need to fix the direction of the road, which is an easy enough fix. That this way. No. Control click. That separates the lane junctions. Okay.
Um, no, those are going the right way. Okay, so putting garbage services down here, um, they're going to come in. And if they're going that way, this road should really curve the other way. America. Though that's terrible. What have I done? I've created a monster here. God, I almost want to scratch this. I can't have this happen. It's just not going to work for the highway. I think I probably shouldn't have built this out so far to begin with. I should have centralized more. Yes, a big roundabout could definitely work. We're starting over. I know exactly what I'm going to do this time. All right, new game. We're going to go for... This looks like a tough map. Desert Oasis. Cool. We'll go for the second chance. Hey, NWC Tim, thanks for 92 months. Sorry for not seeing you sooner there. Appreciate you. Okay, so does this biome look exactly the same? It is the same. Interesting. Alright, this time around, we're just going to build in this section to begin, then we'll expand over, rather than trying to do it all at once. We're also going to begin this with a roundabout. Or not. Okay, we'll go halfway to the train tracks. Just did the exact same thing I did last time. Hold on. We're going to have this road go out a little bit like this. Make this into a, a fork. Let's go ahead and delete these side sections, like this. Okay. 
already feeling a lot better. All right, so for the moment, we're going to have, um, I think, residential go this way and industry go this way. Let's go ahead and get our uh, water services and stuff set up, though. Water is flowing this way, I believe. Let's see if that's true. It is. So we're going to put our water pumping station right here at the edge of the map. And then we're going to put our... Uh, our waste here so it flows down... down river. And I guess for the, the interim here, I can just build on this section. It's not going to hurt anything. Okay, electricity. We're going for some wind here. Oh, hey, look, we got a nice little section uh, here that works. I like the idea of building up... Um, building the, the windmills on the hill, though. Seems Seems appropriate wind turbines let's put down two of these let's go ahead and get uh, that's connected to power good I'm gonna run uh, these power lines from here to here to here let's just run power lines for now up to here Do a straight road out both both ways. Perpendicular to the train tracks. We're close enough. going to run power from here to here for the moment. Power lines will be uh, fixed later. We're also going to need water services now, I guess. Okay, it's not connected to anything is what it's saying. I think the first pipe we should put in is connecting these two, uh, these two waters. It's the sound of refreshment. Okay, they are uh, connected now. Soda. Belch the best. All right. You're listening to all that jazz. Beats, bongos, boats, bass, cymbals, snares, and a skinny man with a trumpet. That's what jazz means to me. Hashtag fresh water. Nice. Good morning, Linsky. What's good? Armithos, thanks for 24 months. Enjoy that continued lurk. Thanks so much for two years. We don't have anybody moved in, so we're not happy. That's fair.
Do the pipes have upkeep? They do. They do. I'm going to wait to build this out then. Neighborhood's looking good. It's showing people here, but nobody's actually moved in. Not yet. Okay. Nobody's nobody's moved in yet. It's fair. There we go. We got some people. Now they want some places to shop and some jobs. That's definitely fair. Put a little industry down here right now. Build it up nice and slow. A little uh, shopping center uh, right here. Gonna need to add more uh, power in on this side. Does this cost? Per cell, 40.48 indeed. It'd be easier if we just built it over here. In fact, for the moment, let me pause here. Gonna do this. And this. Oh. Do industry here. This way I don't have to bring power all the way to the other side yet. Glad you can make it, Sam Davers. Thanks for being here. Been a good one. Our first build today definitely didn't work out how we imagined, but we're there now. Roundabouts are good. These will eventually be changed to one-lane highways, but right now I don't have to worry about that. Not at all. You guys will have power soon, don't worry. Are we just not going to build here? Fair enough. Alright, let's go ahead and build a couple power lines, I guess. I guess. Just for now. Yo, Nick Pack, thanks for 81 months. Thank you.
All right, we're getting somewhere. Not fast, but we're getting there. All right, so I don't plan on keeping this industrial. We're going to build the industrial zone over here. But for the moment, I just didn't want to build more power lines and stuff. Should be in the green soon enough here. It says it wants more residential, but they haven't built houses here yet, so there's that. Extend out this road just a smidge. Let's go to right about here. Sorry about that. I want water services, I guess. Okay, we're almost in the green here. Almost. Hey, we're making money. We're a town now. buildings there. Let's just build a little more industry on this side of the street. Again, our goal here is not optimization. It's simply to... Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's going to be traffic issues here. Just to get it built up so we're making a little cash. No sweat. Just a nice little town. So I think uh, one thing I'm going to do here is on this neighborhood, I want to kind of create a closed loop when I do when I do that. So I'm going to build a curved road out this way, and then I'm going to build an offshoot of that curved road. And then I'm going to build uh, basically cul-de-sacs going this way. And then at the end of this road where all the cul-de-sacs can go, they leave their houses from i'm going to create overpasses that go back into the highway so people leaving from their house can get to their job on this side of the town via the overpass but really coming into the neighborhood is going to be kind of a one-way deal i also don't want to overextend on infrastructure early just want to uh build it up right okay I'm going to start by building this curved road, though, because we're going to need a few more houses. Not too many right now. A couple. I don't like the angle on that right now. I like that a lot better. Except... Let's begin by going here. So this isn't too heavy of a curve on that road. This looks like a good angle right there. All right, and then we'll make this a straight road for now. Just like that. Let's just stop right there for now. Let's zone up a little bit more residential here. Just a little bit. 
Okay, yeah, you guys want water. That's fair. I, I get it. There's an inland water treatment plan. I get that. Like, I know. Let's use our move it tool to kind of massage this road a little bit. Yeah, that'll do it. Oh, what map was it? I think this was the um, mixed biomes map. Something like that. So we're going to get to right under 500 people. Let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit, and then we'll uh, chill for a minute. I think one of the biggest traps in this game is overextending your growth too quickly, like zoning too much at once. Three fifty-eight doesn't appear to be going up too fast. Let's zone a little bit more residential, just a smidge. Nothing wrong with smattering in a little bit of a uh, commercial with these neighborhoods too. I like the idea of the neighborhoods having some shopping centers and things. Yes, it is, Cranky Old Gnome. There's uh, a lot of DLC radio stations. This is one of them. Yo, Cold Leftovers, thanks for 29 months. This area needs it's another roundabout. So I'm gonna do a uh, roundabout. I'm gonna curve in here, and then we're gonna create those uh, cul-de-sac areas. But first. Okay, here we go. Gonna make a curved road here. Right, do we have access to four lane roads now? We do. do. Nope, that's not the one. Forty-six. Let's do this right here. I'll go ahead and add a little more shopping on this side. There we go. Hey, sick Nick. Thanks so much for that prime sub, dude. Really appreciate that. Thanks for taking the time for that. Appreciate the consideration. Glad you've been enjoying the YouTube content as well. Cheers, man. All right, so we're like right under 500 people. Um, why does everybody need water services? Okay, explain yourself. Let's 
stream for about hour 40 minutes this morning. I'm just going to stand up, stretch my legs real quick, refill my water and coffee. Encourage you to do that same thing as well. We're going to let this roll at full speed, earn up a little cash during this brief intermission. I'll be back in, you know, just a couple minutes here. In fact, let's go ahead and do, uh, wow, nice, nice view of the railroad tracks there. Nice. Some power lines. Awesome. What a view. We'll be back in just a minute for the continuation uh, of this build. Shop Power, thanks for 15 months, dude. Thank you. Coffee, fuel of the modern economy. The age-old Italian tradition of burning beans and drinking the bitter bean juice. At Burn Bean Coffee, our environment all is right. perfect for all of your work needs. There's no better Hey, look at that. Oh, it slowed it down for that? Son of a gun. Our coffee technicians are trained to make a variety of Yo, Chop Power, thanks for 15 months during that brief intermission. Appreciate it. While generally making more noise than anyone could reasonably ignore. I will so build more residential in a minute, game. In a minute. Sippy sip coffee fans. Burn bean coffee. Get it while it's hot. Due to recent court actions, we are required. Alright, how about um The weed is over. It's finally here. Friday night chili bowling at Andy's bowling alley. Every Friday night, anyone chili who buys bowling, huh? Alright. Alright. Classic chili bowling. How's our electricity? I bet it's pretty low here. Oh, yeah. Let's go ahead and add on some more here. Little turbine, turbine action. Uh, let's keep it somewhat symmetrical, I guess. Okay, I'm going to upgrade all these roads once it becomes a problem. But until then, not so much. Let's also go uh, into economy real quick. I'm going to drop the road budget because it's not important for this small of a town at the moment. What is the advantage of having a higher 
road budget. Okay, I guess we got to our next threshold here. Fair enough. Okay, let's start by doing this here. Let's do that. I'm gonna go not curved. It's gonna do a, a straight road on this side, out this way. Gonna zone a little more residential. Let's put a landfill out here. Recycling center. Citizens can recycle more different kinds of waste. And the city has a recycling center, making less garbage pile up. Center produces small amounts of raw materials from the waste. All right. We'll build that in a minute. gonna take him a hot minute to get over here and that's fine everybody has garbage that's true it's true yo greg and balto thanks for 58 months glad it's been chill for you man cheers all right let's do just a little more zoning here so smidge smidge of zoning Last year, Horse Economy 3 smashed PC sales records and took the industry by storm. Now the hit equine economic I just put some more power stuff in here. That's cool, the landfill doesn't need any power or water. I guess that makes sense. Stable markets. Can you work your way from lowly horse to be the head of a major real estate empire? Can you spin your holdings into a billion dollar conglomerate? Can you work your way under the fence and out of your pen and onto your life as a property mogul? Spreadsheets have never been hotter. Pre-order now and get a free... Hell yeah, pass. spreadsheets. Economy three, stable markets. How's noise pollution Why looking? Why is the noise pollution bad here? Oh, because the, uh, the commerce area. Got it, got it. Let's go ahead and keep zoning uh, some residential here. Does this area have water services? It does. We're just going to go uh, save our game here. It's going to be the second chance. It's caps lock. Going to save. Just going to go back uh, to the main menu and then reload the city.
All right. All right, now I gotta think about how we're gonna build this neighborhood. We got for medical services here, medical clinic. That's probably uh, good. Let's build the infrastructure out here first, though. Okay. We're going to go curved road. We're going to go about this angle. Too much. Here. Stick a uh, roundabout in the middle here. I guess the outside road's not as important. Let's just centralize this. go curved here. There's a fly in the studio and it's an interesting uh, curve that created. Oh, we did just make a two-way roundabout. You're right. Hold on. It definitely wants to be one way here. Thank you for that catch. Two ways on the ways going out is what we want for sure. I thought that was going to give more connection over to this neighborhood. I guess not. Put it over here. Okay, let's put a health clinic uh, here. Oh, yeah, recycling center. Okay, recycling center does have a little bit of noise pollution associated with it. But I'm gonna put this on the uh, the edge of the neighborhood here. And this will probably want uh, water and power, huh? Power at least. For the moment, it's gonna connect this power line over here. That is a, not a permanent solution.
Looks like it is time to get some more citizens. I'm going to put some commercial on this side of the town as well. It's going to be a mixed industrial commercial zone. I'm going to put, uh, this is definitely Neighborhoodville. Start connecting this in. Let's put a swath of this as well. That's quite enough zoning for the moment. I think I'm going to build this out like an octopus, right? Just have all these branches coming out of the, the center, but not actually connecting back to the road. And then on this side, I'll make I'll build an overpass, um, maybe one offshoot here that splits and then can go to both sides of the highway. So I create a a loop this way and then a way back out of the city from there so they don't have to go all the way back out this way through this roundabout to get out of town if they want. That is uh, a lot further than we're currently at. Oh hey, I got taxes now. Let's uh, raise these to 12%. As far as I've seen, 12% is pretty, uh, pretty sweet spot. Go back to some J's. Hey, Adam Moss, nice to see you, man. Take a sip of water here. Water's awesome. What's our next unlock here? How many people? Population of 1,000. All right, all right. Wouldn't mind staying under that for the moment. Yeah, I like this map too, tastefully named. It's got a it's got a cool look to it. I'm actually a little bit surprised this roundabout's not having more problems right now with all the industry trucks. We'll need to create a loop um, going back to the highways for sure. But not yet. Kind of waiting to see if the uh, population is going to stabilize here or not. It's still going up. Looking more at the amount of people rather than the uh, demand for residential. Because right now we're making money. We're going to need a lot of money to build police department, fire department, uh, more trash services, high school, all that stuff. So just throwing down a bunch of residential right now is just going to escalate us into needing to take a loan, which is fine. But instead, we could just not be in a rush. How's the power looking on the city? All right, going to need to build some more power here soon, too. Let's go ahead and uh, add a couple more turbines here. 
actually adding in a, a coal power plant over here might not be a bad idea. Five sixty a week, huh? That's pretty intense. Just go here. Yo, Curran, glad it's a good stream for you to study. Thanks for being here. Yo, King Lysandias, thanks for 59 months. Thanks a lot. lower the budget here for the moment. I think we're good on health services too. I can always raise these back up. I'm just trying to pinch a little bit here. Okay, I don't have any education down yet. That's fine. Oh yeah, what's our water at right now? We should we should be very adequate on water. Yeah, I can I can lower the water budget for sure because <laughs> We're way over capacity. When we reach uh, the point where we're going over, I can raise the budget again. But right now, I just don't need to. Yeah, when we do eventually get to trains, having the train track next to the industry area is very beneficial. zone just a little more house here I guess it's still going up create a few more jobs on this side of town oh he's just going around the roundabout nice dude nice Hold on, is there traffic stuff happening in here? Okay, fir first things first. Why? Okay, here we go. Walker Street. What is this? Clear traffic rules. Apply stop signs on connected roads. Yield signs. Not seeing any icons here. Why? Okay, here we go. This wasn't zoomed in. No parking on the roundabout, huh? Okay, no signs. Population seems pretty stable here at 860. Let's go ahead and build another house. Colossal ore. We are I think what I'm going to do for next time I play, I'm going to create a playlist from the music and the DLC folders. This game, uh... There's a lot of music stations, they're all really good, but uh, just so the way it processes, sometimes the music hitches a little bit. It's not really all that bothersome, but it'd be easy enough just to create a playlist with the music that's provided in the folders to uh, get around that. Just a well-known issue with the game, not really a big deal, just verbalizing that.
Yo, Mr. Urda, thanks for 91 months. Nine more for that 100 club, and don't be bad. Thanks for 64, man. Thanks. Oh, hey, we're definitely getting there. Should probably build uh, some education next. Sure. What is this occupied by? Was this the health center? A medical clinic, that's what that is. What's this? Community school. Let's go ahead and go community school here. Oh yeah, that's not a continuous loop. I'm gonna put the community school on this edge because we're gonna build out uh, into the neighborhood here. So uh, this should be a good spot for it. A huge rush to have my population grow. We are going to need to adjust the water budget here soon, I think. That's still looking okay. We're over on electricity. Good. Guess the budget amount is not that much different. Yo, Zerg Hunter, thanks for 105 months. Been great so far. Thank you. All right, so I want more commercial. I'm just going to mix it in here a little bit. Here, let's go back to the main menu and reload in. Oh, I didn't save my game first. Dang. Whoopsie do. Okay, it, it auto saved uh, pretty recently there, but we did miss out on. Had these zoned. Is my school built? No. Okay, so that's where I'm at, building the school. I'm going to put it right here.
<laughs> wow, Pin Pin. That is quite the noise you're making. Come here. What a good kitsu. Cats are just the best. Okay, I also did not build these uh, mills here. Okay, so that was not... Not my wisest move there. It's lost about 10 minutes. No problem. Okay, taxes are raised. Let's go to 13% here and see what happens. Yeah, all right, so we can lower the water budget here. Uh, we lower the trash to about 80%. Medical services as well. Can always raise these back up. Pretty excited about the start of this build, so I'm going to build... Um, Lanes going out here for the rest of the uh, residential, and then we'll create an overpass over here to get back to the highway. And then we'll have a nice little uh, continuity on this side for the neighborhood. How's the power now? Really good. For the moment, while we're just sitting here waiting, I'm going to lower the power budget to 75. Looks good. I'll zoom back here, see what's the next section of land I want to buy. Thinking this side probably makes the most sense. We're not there yet, but... Definitely looks good. Let's go ahead and create these couple more jobs. Go, uh... Here. You know, let's put a commercial uh, right here. Yo, Nathan Melton, thanks so much for 54 months. And Slag App, thanks for four as well. Glad you're enjoying. I have a higher budget in the daytime? Don't. I guess for water I do. How's our landfill doing? 7% full. Not bad. What's our next unlock? Population of a thousand. We get districts, policies, loan, specializations, policies. 
emergency services. So we gotta have money to buy emergency services. We can always take out a loan to get to the next uh, threshold. That's not really a problem. Agricultural specialization. Okay, water consumption. Increased tax income. Nice. Do we have fertile land? Can we even look at that right now? I think I'm going to make that playlist before the next time we play, and I think with that, I'm going to save my game right here. Second chance. And we're going to make a little swap a roni here. Very much enjoying City Sky. I just want to get that music thing sorted out. Um, I'll do that on my day off, which will probably be tomorrow. I will resume that city. I'm very happy with that start. I'll be uh, stewing on that, uh, what we're going to do with it here uh, for the next day or two. Hard Cider Dave, thanks for 40 months, man. Appreciate that. I want to do some chess puzzles right now. Flex the old brain muscle. Yes, fire and police are about 12,000 each. I think that's right. All right, so. Let me grab some uh, FTL tunes here, huh? There go. Let's make a little playlist on the fly. All right, looks good. Okay, let's go puzzles here. Here we are. Puzzling. All right, best move for white. While we're doing uh, puzzles, you're more than welcome to make any suggestions that you would like to. Uh, puzzles are not a rated mode. Well, we are playing rated puzzles, but we're not playing against an opponent, so you can openly discuss the board state, no problem. All right, best move for white here. Oh, I can see we're in a little bit of trouble. Got some stuff coming in. What is what is our dealio? Let's see, their queen's pretty short on squares. Temptations to get to this square. That's not happening right now with this feller. Hmm. I'm not seeing a very clear way forward on this particular puzzle. Let me scroll this back a little bit to see what the previous moves were, huh? So, why did we play H3 here? Why was this rook moving an issue or a thing we needed? If I go here, he's going to move back here and then he's threatening this. That doesn't quite work. I think King G2 might be it uh, with the idea that... 
Uh, after that, if he goes up here and takes, we can swing over and do this. The rook does look almost trapped, yeah. I think that's definitely uh, a thing. Also, if this pawn ever goes, uh, we have check, checkmate. So maybe like this with the moving the king up makes some sense. This puzzle's a little weird. Uh, interesting puzzle to start on. I think I'm going to try king g2 and it's probably going to be wrong just so I can get on to another puzzle. Yeah, what's the solution here? Bishop f2. What did I miss? Alright, that was a really weird puzzle. So that's a quiet move puzzle. Alright, I wasn't getting that one. That's fair. All right, best move for white. This one looks pretty straightforward to me. We take the rook, uh, take, takes again, queen takes, bishop's hanging. No. Oh, of course. So if I do it this way, then we're threatening checkmate on the other side. Jump the gun on that one. Oh, my gut tells me to do this. But he has the knight and the rook covering this square. So how's that going to lead us to uh, checkmate? I could sneak in the move bishop d6 first to cover this square. And then taking here comes with a checkmate threat. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, my top candidate move right now is bishop d6 and then after the rook moves we take and then we're hitting the knight and we're threatening checkmate on h2 i'm gonna try to find a better move here but that's looking pretty nice In fact, after bishop d6, his only real way out of checkmate that I can see would be um, putting the rook here or moving the king over. So I think we pick up the rook after that move. Okay. Oh boy. Okay, on this one, I think we just pick up the bishop. We have uh, this square covered and this square protected, which are the two squares that the king can protect the bishop. So if we go bishop g1, the king is forced away to one of these squares, and then we pick up the uh, piece. There may be additional follow-up after that, but that seems a pretty, uh, pretty clear start. All right. It's got to be bishop e3 to protect the pawn. Got to be. All right, best move for black, uh, bishop pair. Hmm. I think if I was uh, playing like in a blitz game, I'd just play rook c8. 
But what's the threat after that? Is there one? You know what I think this might be? Is this move here. Because... If we get this move in, and he takes, the pawn promotes. There's no way for him to move his bishop out of the way, take, and then protect in time. And also, if he retakes with the pawn, then his bishop can't come here to stop promotion either. So right now, bishop b3 is my candidate move. That pawn's very far up the board, and there's no real way to harass it. He can't even... I mean, he can't get in here, but... Looks like at the minimum, we pick up a minor piece for a pawn at the end of this. Yeah, he is threatening to take here. That's very fair. I think it's got to be this. It was. Interesting. Well, our pawn's very far advanced here. Hmm. What's our plan here to get this pawn promoted? If we check on E1, he just slides down here, and I don't really see a good way forward on that. He's also got this coming in, so it's a little imperative at the moment. What's our plan? If I had like all the time in the world, maybe coming over here and then pushing and doing this would make some sense, but I don't. We have three moves exactly until he promotes. Rook in-games are so deceptively complicated. Uh, we draw arrows by right-clicking and then dragging. Or left-click left controls the pieces. Yeah, offering a trade of rooks, isn't it? Um... Hmm. Yeah, that's where I'm at too, uh, Tasteland. Right? I hear you that you want to get here and then threaten checkmate, but there's just no time. I think this one's going to go all the way down to getting queened. I feel like I should see this one a lot clearer than I do, but I really just don't see the way forward for black. It's a predicament to be sure.
this is a weird one. Uh, maybe this is not so much like a crushing advantage as a, just like a... If we can get rid of this pawn, then we have the the connected passers. What the hell are we supposed to do here? Let's uh, look at starting with check, because that's a forcing move. It only has one move available. He goes here, right? Um... Check again. No, he has too many options. Okay, let's take a look at something that's not check now. Uh, look at this, and then if he takes, we take, and then we have no way to stop his pawn from promoting. I guess the main issue I keep running into is that if I trade off the rooks or do anything passive, then after, no matter what I do here, he can trade this pawn for this pawn and move to the corner to stop this one permanently. And then we have this problem. I could go check and then come back to this square because it forces him out and then it pins this pawn. Um... Okay, this is looking kind of promising. It's not necessarily good, but it's the most promising line I've seen yet. Uh, we check. He goes here. We go back here, threatening check, and then some very dangerous follow-up. And then when he goes back to the square, we push this pawn with check. And then we eventually pick this up. Okay, here we go. It's not the move. What, what is this? Oh, okay, okay. This move was not even on my radar. It makes sense having seen it now. That was a really tricky in-game puzzle. That way he can't get back to the, uh, the square and it's forcing. Okay, uh, right now, Rook takes e4 looks pretty good. What's better than that? I guess if I take on e4, he's going to get check in here, which is real annoying. Oh yeah, that hits my rook a third time too, so that's not going to work. Well, uh, this or this looks pretty uh, natural then. I think there's a checkmate somewhere in here. Okay, if we start with this check. If he goes here, it's checkmate, so he's gonna go here. That's a that's a forced move. Follow up with check, he just goes here. They're certainly not giving me any, uh, any gimme puzzles here, that's for sure. Also got this square to check from afterwards. As a possibility. I'm thinking that rook f6 is the start because this rook being pinned by the queen forces this move.
Let me look at the queen here again. So queen, if he goes here, it kind of just stops us in our tracks. So it really, it seems like rook f6 is the way forward. Let's start here. All right, now what? Probably A1 check rather than D1, just because this can come in. Okay, hold on. What about taking here with check? And then if he takes here, we have... Check, checkmate. Okay. Got him. This is almost a Bowden's mate type scenario. A very dangerous square. Uh, this also threatens checkmate, though not immediately. Uh, if we move this bishop right now, we're also checkmated. Let's keep that in mind. Also, the bishop's about to be taken here by him. It's pinned. So, um, this check actually looks better now, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. Take on f5 looks really nice right now. The difference between f5 and h6 is that the queen can block here while being defended by the king, but the queen cannot block here after this check. Yeah, this is the plus or minus of the rating we're on, and this is the current puzzle we're doing. So uh, this is just our session. I'm thinking queen takes f5 looks really good. I'm going to just look for a second for maybe something better, but it seems pretty immediate that we have to make a decision here because we're under uh, immense pressure on this piece with no way to really defend it. Looking what happens after Queen F7. I think after Queen F7, we perhaps go here. We take the bishop right now, we get checkmated on this square. It's a good idea, though. Wondering if there's an intermediary move here. Um, afterwards. Because after I check here and he goes to uh, h6, our follow-up's not very direct. All right, so we're going to go uh, here and then take the bishop. Seems the, the best way forward. I was really looking for a checkmate here, but this just doesn't exist. There's no good attacking threat. And we don't have a check after f7, so it's got to be here. Okay, well, one thing to note here is that 
Let's go two minor pieces. Let's go back a couple moves here. Let's see what's up. Okay. So he's daring me to take on that. I don't think so. This seems like a good start, but what about afterwards? Maybe we are supposed to take the knight here. It does open up this square to, uh, to get hit, which is nice. A decent explanation there, Jaguar. Decent explanation. Sure, it wasn't your attention, Shumi, but uh, your question came off as more of an accusation than a question. If you think about it, I hope you understand that. Just because something uh, looks easy to you does not diminish the uh, complication for somebody else. as each person experiences difficulty and complication in their own way. I am much better at certain parts of chess than others, and I think every person that plays can say that. As for example, I'm much stronger at pawn in games than I am rook in games. I'm exceptionally better at openings than I am in games right now, working on that. Uh, good guy. While we're doing puzzles, all suggestions are welcomed. I only ask that you don't discuss board state during live rated games. Everything else is good. All right, let's just start breaking this down piece by piece. I've been looking at this for too long now. So uh, the most tempting immediate move is just to take here. But the follow up's not clear because after king to either h2 or f2, uh, we don't have a good follow-up check, and the rook is unprotected. So I'm thinking we're supposed to take here first, because I need to I need to have this square to recheck from. I'm about ready just to take on g5 and see what happens. Yeah, I don't see a way forward without access to the F3 square. Also, if we just take this knight off the board and the pawns are doubled, we're um, looking pretty good. He does have uh, some pretty direct threats because we're cut off here. Our king currently has uh, only this square it can walk to. Let's go ahead and do this. Okay. Okay, we're going to go to king uh, h6. What happens after that, I believe, is he's going to try rook f7. And if he does that, we have check. And if he goes here, we have a follow-up check here. And when he goes here, we got checkmate.
Going back to the back row is going to be get us checkmated pretty quick, I think. Yep, okay. Okay, a couple options here. Uh, where to move the king is the first choice. Uh, we got a major problem, because if we move backwards, we're getting checkmated on this square, because of the knight. So, that makes me think that the correct choice is c3. As far as I can tell, all the other squares get checkmated on the spot. We go here, uh, checkmate, checkmate, checkmate can't go here, so there's only one choice left. Another option we have would be to block with the rook, but then it just drops that too. Gotta be c3. What happens after c3? I guess we're hitting the knight again, or twice. Um... After c3, it seems like he's going to go here, and then he's hitting the king and the rook, and we can't retreat to the defensive square. We could retreat back to d2. There's this move as well. This is a scary position for white. Yeah, there's like a, a field of depth calculation, uh, Zephyr Tronium, that goes into that. But yeah, you can get some very high-level puzzles from low-rated uh, player games. It's just due to the uh, complexity calculation the computer uses. Okay, after this, we just take here, and if he takes my rook, then uh, <laughs> he's toast. So I think that's the point. Oh, hey, d3 is not actually checkmate. We got this square still, or we can take the knight. Maybe d3 is looking nicer. Whether we pick d3 or c3, they both run into uh, this check. So I guess the main difference between these two moves is that rook, rook c8 is not uh, a check. I think we gotta go d3 here. And then it really has to be taking the knight. Okay, here's a consideration, right? If we uh, block with the knight, there's no remaining checks for the queen. The queen is out of checks. So like if we went here, or maybe even rook here, uh, there's no checking squares for the enemy queen. I'm actually thinking rook c4 looks pretty nice here because if he takes with the pawn, um, big trouble for him. Possibly just retreating backwards is fine, too, now that we've taken material advantage. Uh, I would say taking the pawn on d5, probably a huge mistake, because it allows his rooks to get into the game. I think walking this backwards is actually the way to go, because now there's no uh, knight threatening the check here. So if we can get it back to this square, then we've, uh, we've freed up our resource. Yeah, we gotta walk backwards, because otherwise we're gonna fork the, um, the rook. That was a very tough one. 
All right, well, first things first here. Um, we've got a surprise attack with the knight if we move it. It's the first thing I see here. Uh, we also have a nice little juicy skewer. I think the skewer looks better than uh, any of the things I can do with the knight. So after going e3, it's probably going to take here, and then we retake with the rook. Queen has to move, and then we pick up this one. Cool. been really trying to focus on my puzzles uh, overall um, finding the end of the puzzle line before making the best move because I can very often just see what the best move is but then when we get into the fourth and fifth move of the puzzle I get myself in trouble all right this one's a checkmate pattern uh, so we're gonna go uh, check He's going to block with the knight, his only move. We're going to take it. He's going to take it with his king. We're going to go here, checkmate. Uh, Emil, let's go back to this puzzle. I'll show you real quick. Uh, this one here. Well, taking the rook would drop our queen for one, but even if our queen was protected, this is a better evaluation of points. A uh, rook and a queen be worth 14 points, which would be left over if we took the, uh, took the rook, and two rooks is worth 10 points. Hope that clears that up for you. Agreed, uh, Fabane. The checkmate puzzles are some of the, well, not easiest to find, but once you know you found checkmate, then, well, you've solved. Well, I'm going to bet that this puzzle starts with rook takes, just to remove that complication. Also, I uh, recently worked through the uh, Checkmate Patterns Manual on Chessable. It's a really fantastic course. Check is certainly tempting, too. What's the follow-up to that? Okay, he moves away. Now what? That doesn't look right. It's not good enough. What other checks do we have available? We have this check, this check, this check, this check. Oh, there it is. Nice one, uh, BB. Good, good find. And then we're doubling up on the rook, so he loses material. All right, I think this one's going to be pretty straightforward. I think it's going to be check. I was looking at him going this way, and that'd make it very simple. What if he goes this way? Look at that. Check, he goes this way.
could check here. Hmm. F2 is looking less desirable now, the more I look at it. What about Knight F3 check? Also not very desirable. Okay, after this, we do have this move. I was missing that piece. Okay, yeah, this, this looks good. I'm very confident Rook F2 is the start to this one. Okay, he chose to go that way. So this way... Oh yeah, this gets really bad for him if he goes that way. He's going to lose this Rook in that case. I see. Pretty little, good little session here so far. Thank you all for your uh, suggestions and discussion. Appreciate you. This one's kind of fun. So we take the queen, he takes here. Uh, then we take here with check, uh, forking the knight and the king. And if he takes here, we have this. So we're going to remove the defender of d6 and then... Uh, use the fact that these are defending each other against the enemy player. There we go. Oh, there's a couple of Fabian. I think there might even be um, a tool for learning notation on... Uh, let's see here. Ordinance. No, that's not it. Notation in here? Notation is not interesting. I am absolutely sure there are some resources for learning chess notation, though. Um, the main thing is learning where this stuff is on the grid, the 1 through 8, A through H, and then after that it's all uh, the piece and then the corresponding um, square. The only difference is, is when two pieces can move to the same square, like two knights, and then you'd put um, knight ranker file to the file. So, like, um, let me just go here to a, a board real fast. So let's go to analysis board, and let's just say we make some moves here. So now if he goes here and I'm going to move this knight here, I would say knight G to E2. And if I was going to move this knight back, I'd say knight C to E2. Or sometimes you'll do knight 4 to E3 or something like that. That's really the only time there's an additional notation past moving the piece. Uh, and then X counts for capture. Um, and then sometimes on like pawn captures, it will just say like, uh, let's just do this. You just say, just EXF5. Just you only need the letter of the of the square to denote a pawn. Um, I think that this looks all right. Pointing out the fact that we have two attackers on his one defender. So 
I think the most natural response to B3 would probably be A5, but in that case, I just do this. And then we're achieving a similar effect. This pawn still stands as an attacker. What I worry about then, I guess, after we go here, here, um, takes, then he goes here. Hmm. I feel like I'm missing one piece here. I'm reasonably certain that B3 is the beginning to this puzzle, but the follow-up, maybe not so much. Oh, hey, uh, we can also point out that the knight is the defender of the queen, so perhaps rook takes C4 looks nice, because if he retakes here, um, we take the queen, and if he takes the queen, we have a series of checks before we recapture. Yeah, so it's going to be rook takes uh, c4. And then no matter how he solves the complication, he's not getting the material back because we remove the defender here and we can take this rook with check. Okay. Very good. I do so much better at puzzles when I'm sitting here on the PC talking with you guys than I do like on tablet. <laughs> Drawing the arrows and articulating the thought process is uh, very helpful. Oh, well, unless there's some sneaky checkmate here, this looks like a very simple surprise attack. Yeah, there's no direct uh, checkmate follow-up here. Sometimes when you can create a pin on the king here, uh, you can utilize uh, utilize like a rook sacrifice. But since he's already fianchettoed the bishop, he's always going to have this move to defend the back rank check. So this looks like a pretty straightforward surprise attack on the queen. Okay, we check first. Very important. Dude, what a string here. Hell yeah. We're cruising. Ah, okay, okay. So the move that jumped out to me here right away was this, because I was like, ooh, I got a pin, so I can I can check from there. But before we do that, we can just uh, fork the king and the queen and either retakes with the queen or he forfeits it. So he's going to retake with the queen and then we check. So we're luring the queen to the forking square. Very good. Yo, Fatal Hobo, thanks for 17 months. Mr. Iswith, thanks for 67 a few minutes ago. Well, thanks for that kind message, too. Appreciate you. All right, uh, let's just point out some facts about this position. Uh, our queen is under attack. Uh, Bishop is deep in our territory, feeling rather cramped as the black player right here. What is an elegant solution to our problems?
Is there a threat I can create while hitting this piece or this piece? Or sorry, uh, this piece or this piece? Well, we can point out the fact that we already have tension on this by creating a new attack on this piece. So I could just go queen f5 saying I'm hitting both your, uh, both your knight and your bishop. That seems pretty promising. I'm going to say queen f5 is my candidate move right now. I was looking at queen takes e3, but I really don't think that that leads anywhere. Because after takes takes, he just steps to the side and, well, we're busted. Yeah, queen f5 looks good. All right, see, this I didn't see. I did not see this move. So now we have a couple of options. We can go rook e6, or we can go rook d7. Or we could even take. Now, if we just take the, the knight, he takes the rook, we retake with this. Um, that's fine. This, however, doesn't work, because after taking the... The knight, he's going to take here, removing the defender, and then when I take back, it's this. So it's uh, basically even exchange. But not quite. Okay, let me just look at this real fast. Takes, takes. I could go here and get a double attack on the bishop. But I think it would just be cleaner overall if I move the rook to attack the bishop again. And it can't be this square because it's defended, so rook d7, I think, is the solution. Yeah, you're right. What about bishop f4? I didn't think about that. Oh, with bishop f4, we take here. Okay, well, thanks for pointing that out, because now if we move the rook to d7, they can play bishop f4, and we don't have a pin anymore on the king, so the, the knight is defended. In that case, perhaps taking on g5 is correct, because after taking on g5, he takes here to remove the defender, uh, I can take this, and if he just takes the rook, then we're up two pieces for a rook, which is technically, <laughs> technically an advantage, we get six points for five. I misclicked there, no worries, let's try this, okay. Only minus three on that one, though we had the solution. Let's see how this follows up. I want to look in Stockfish on this one. Okay, he takes. Interesting. I guess that makes sense. I was not on this line. If this puzzle would have gone further, I would have missed it. Definitely would have missed it. Okay, we can't take here because check, check, checkmates. Good old blind swine. With that, it's making me think there's probably a queen sacrifice on one of these rooks, and then we can pick this up. So how do I manufacture that situation? Could go check, takes, check. Are there any blocks here? It doesn't work. Let's not lose uh, track of the fact we have this pawn as well.
Hmm. Gonna get this right now, because it hits here. Oop. It's here and here. I think the main issue is starting with the Rook Sacrifice, is after the King takes, no matter where we check the enemy King from, the Queen can retreat to E3 to block the check. Perhaps an even more direct way to approach this is queen to c5. I'm thinking c5 is now it, because we're hitting this pawn, we're defending the rook, and we're hitting both of their rooks. If they take, we pick up the queen. No, that doesn't work, because take, they just took our queen. <sighs> Why is life so hard? Mm, BB points out a very good point here. <laughs> Double point. Um, if we take here and they retake with the king, when we retake here, it's a discovered check. That is definitely a very nice point. So let's make the assumption after the uh, rook play here they go to king king h3 instead Guess we're no worse for wear after that, but I don't see a uh, checkmate follow or anything. Gonna definitely assume that rook takes f2 is the beginning of this puzzle. Okay, I'm just going to go check it out. Okay, he took. I'm going to look after this puzzle on Stockfish to see... Uh, see what happens if he goes H3. Okay, so H3 was his best move. He didn't make it in the game. That happens sometimes in puzzles. What happens after this? What's the best move then? I see, I see. You know, I'm going to click down on this puzzle, because one, he didn't make the best move, and I don't feel like... <laughs> it's very clear what the best route to the king is. So let's say we go here, and then here. So really, at the end of this puzzle, we just picked up a pawn. Okay, I didn't like that one. All right, please excuse me for just a moment. Just going to use the restroom real quick, and uh, I'll return momentarily for some more puzzling.
Okay, we're back. Okay, we got a couple uh, options on this one. Uh, the most tempting of which, to me right now, looks like... Rook takes. Because if he retakes, we have a fork here on the queen. That's oh, not a huge, uh, huge pickup. It's something. Uh, we also have bishop sacrifice here, though that's met by this, so maybe not on that. The other tempting move I was thinking about while I was away was this right here, but after he plays g6... There's not really a follow-up, so rook takes g7 is currently my candidate move. Yes, we do have back rank issues, that's true. So maybe this is more, even more forcing. Perhaps after uh, retakes... That's so true, Pinpin. That's so true. Okay, since we're facing um, imminent... Imminent threat here... No, if we if we get the queen out of the way, then our queen's gonna cover this square. Okay, I'm a hundred percent sure this starts with rook takes g7. Let's take a look at this real fast. If I check here, you can block. Yeah, this is just going to be a fork into uh, this. Hold on a second. Is there a checkmate here? Yes, Horns fan. All of the puzzles on Lee Chess are taken from player games. You can see the game that it was taken from right here and the players that were in the game. Puzzle solutions will always have you making the best move. The opponent will not always make the best move, but they often do. Let me take a look. Let me scrub at this one. So check. He goes here. Say we check again. No, he's got too many return squares. It's got to be here. This is the way. I think white ends up mated here. We're going to start with this move, which leaves only one move, which is knight g3, in which case we take with check. Is there another move? No, that's going to be it. Uh, let me look for another second. I just don't see many possibilities for following up that aren't that. That does leave us at advantage because his king's pretty busted. Hey, Pinball Wiz, what's good? Yeah, all right. Queen H4. Just want to make sure I'm not missing some key detail here. I don't think I am. You know, I gotta say the move, um, 
E4 looks really devastating right now. Looks quite good. Should also look at this, though. If this knight was not covering the c5 square, I'd have a lot of ideas. Hey, what's up, Zealousy? Nice to see ya. We can also slide the knight in here, because if he retakes, boy, the pain is, it's real. Hmm. E4 or knight E4? Knight E4 is threatening checkmate, so that gets really gnarly. Is there any other valid checkmate threats? No. So the thing is that uh, E4 also threatens checkmate. Okay, here's why I'm liking E4 better. Um... Hmm. How about after, after this? I can't do that. Okay, I like E4 better because if we do end up getting a check on this square, the recapture with the knight is going to land with check because this is the only uh, defensible square. And then I think we're swinging back here for checkmate is how I see it right now. Okay, cool. non-enviable position for uh, for the white player to be sure. Well, gut reaction here is to take and then take again, but at that point we'd be uh, still down a lot of material. So uh, taking with the queen looks a lot more forcing. So I'm going to start looking at this line first. Yeah, this gets really bad for black real quick. And we're going to check here. Then we're going to check here. Oh, I goofed. Oh, I missed it. Sons of a guns. Went a little too fast. Uh, Knight H5 looks like a pretty uh, dirty maneuver. It's also looking at takes E3 here, but there's no good follow-up to that. We're also under imminent pressure here, so it seems like we have to be um, on, on the go. Alright, so let's assume that it's Knight H5 threatening checkmate here. Then if he backs up to defend, then we take. Okay, I didn't see him backing up with that piece. That's fair. That's fair. It's 
still here, I think. All right, we need to just brute force this one out. So it's either uh, takes here or knight here. It's the two remaining options. Uh, check. Why do I like knight here better? Leaves only one move, then. Could go here and then here, but is that enough material for having this pass pond already? And for that, I, I guess I would. I don't think we can afford to have f4 hang, so taking with the queen first... Um, doesn't quite work, I don't think. Go say we go check, and he goes here. Then if I go check again or check here, he can block with the rook hitting my queen as well. And this way we pick up the rook um, clean with the knight. There's no, uh, there's no defending for him. Okay. How did we get here? I... So this piece is hanging. Um, this is also hanging, but he just took a piece on that square. So we're already down three points on the board. Okay, we take here first because let's say he moves the knight away for a surprise check. We can then take the checker. Gotta start here. And then we take the checker, and then he takes here, then we take the rook, and we continue being up. Tactics favored us there. Alright, here's a pawn in game. Uh, pawn in games are quite brute force, so you can just choose the options. So, really, our main option here would be. Um, here, here, or go for a triangulation maneuver. Um, since he can slide into the square, I don't see uh, any way that we're going to gain opposition. So we could, like, go uh, here and hope that he goes here, and then we can grab opposition and win. But... Uh, here's how this is going to go. We're going to go to a5. Uh, he's going to go... Let's just say here. I'm going to go here, threatening the pawn. He's going to move back. I'm going to push, threatening the pawn again. He's going to take it. I'm going to take with my king, and then I'm in opposition with the king with him to move, and we just slide over the board and take these. King and pawn in games are generally about creating a situation where the enemy king is two squares away from your king, um, and it's their move. And I think moving to a5 is the clearest way to create opposition. Uh, the reason that this doesn't work, uh, c5, is he can just take opposition right away, and then it's my turn to move, and we just repeat. 
In fact, that'd be much worse because my best option then would be to return and then he goes here with my turn to move and I'm losing this pawn. Got him. All right, this one's going to be push, I'm pretty sure. I was looking at this briefly, but this interrupts. And uh, check, if he goes here, we get to promote to queen. If he goes behind, then we have checkmate on this square. No? Bamboozled. Hold on, I want to see this. Why was that wrong? Oh, because I didn't even take into account he can do it this square. I was only looking at H1. My bad. Once again, for puzzles, you're more than welcome to talk about the board state if you'd like to or make any suggestions. I only ask that you don't uh, discuss the board uh, during live rated games. Today, we're just puzzling, having a good time using our old noggin. My noggin is 36 years old and it's still working pretty good. Hmm. What do? I don't see any real clear threats here for black. All right, let's just assume this starts with night taste, because how else are we going to unclog this position? No. Okay, after we take, we retake, doesn't matter what PC we takes with. We're going to be doing a little, uh, a little step up, trapping the bishop on this square. Bloop. Oh, hey, Flesh, you saw that one, too. Nice. Hmm. Well, this looks pretty, like, pretty imperative for, uh, for white. What's his best move against that? G4? Maybe not. I feel like this has to end in a checkmate, or at the very least picking up a piece. Uh, what's the material right now? We're down two pawns as black. Uh, that's a pretty good indicator to the puzzle will probably end in checkmate since we're already behind material. I'm thinking Rook H6 has to be the start here. Because everything good's gonna happen from this pawn being pinned, and 
making more pressure on the king. Yeah, I'm just gonna throw the move out there. We'll see what happens. All right. And now we take with the rook. Okay. Let me back this up. I want to see the continuation after g4, which is at least on the move list. Okay. Takes here. Takes. 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 All right. Not the clearest one for me, but we found the solution. That's the important thing. Well, queen d5 looks like a devastator because there's no defender for this thing. He can slide back up here, I suppose. Okay, we can accomplish the same threat by moving the queen to uh, b7 instead. That covers this square um, and attacks this square. Hard to imagine that queen b7 is not is not the move, but let's look at this for another second and, you know, think about it. You're on top of it today, BB. Thanks for all your suggestions. Well, if queen b7 is wrong, I'm not sure I want to be right. All right, so here we're down two pieces for a rook. Uh, the move rook c4 looks immediately very desirable to me. But we may need to throw in a check first. Here. We can also... Uh, what else can we do here? We could take with check, and then when he retakes, uh, fork the king and the knight. That looks pretty good. That seems probably better than going here, because that does leave some other shenanigans you can do. What's the advantage of checking first? Not seeing one. I think this one's going to be uh, takes, takes, fork, take over here. Yeah, it's not rook c4 to begin, because then he has the move uh, knight c2, and it's anchored here, so we can't uh, we can't take it with the rook to take advantage of this pin. I was looking at knight c6 before, and then we could just take it with the rook, but knight c2 throws a major wrench in that plan. Also, when you're looking at puzzles, I think looking at the most forcing lines first, like checks, is generally a good place to go. All right, 2300, nice. All right, so the immediate threat is this check uh, with the promotion. So I think what this is, is we go takes, 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 check, and then we retreat the rook to the back rank, 
creating a line here, so if he takes either Rook, we're able to still defend the back rank. Past that, there's really not too much to do here. Taking the knight right away is also an option, but uh, getting the exchange first is very desirable. One downside of the plan I just showed is that after, um, at the end of this line, takes, 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 check, uh, block, when he goes rook c7, we have a very hard time getting off the back rank with our king. Because if we move the rook up, he's going to recheck, and then we don't get the pawn. Um, that's tough. I still think that plan is correct, but it's very difficult at the end of it to get anywhere. Let's try. Okay, it stops there, and indeed, rook c7 is the best move. So what's our plan after that? Huh. Yeah, it's going to be uh, maybe even a draw at the end of this. Uh, maybe not at minus 3.8. Let's just follow the best moves illustrated here. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I can cut off his king. Huh. Okay, I see. If his king ever comes down, I have check and then take this to fix the problem. I get it now. Those darn rook endgames. Alright, so this one's going to be... Takes, takes, retreat back to defend my pawn. Um, and he's going to push. I'm going to retreat the bishop to block this square. And then eventually he's going to run out of moves, have to move his king. And then I can uh, slide over here, here, and push. Yeah, thanks for that secret use. That'd be a good thing to do. Okay, if he didn't take here first, I gotta retreat the bishop back. Now we go back here. Alright. Bear. On my vacation, I also worked through the uh, 100 in games you must know uh, manual. That was a good experience. Definitely a better in game player for that experience, though, certainly no master. Still working on that. Hmm. It's looking like bishop takes to me, because that removes the defender of this piece and also double hits this bishop. So he retakes, and then we take this piece. Um, it looks pretty clear. If we take with the knight, then he gets to take with the bishop, and then when we take here, he takes again. So... Is that really... is that really worse? Ah, uh, that is worse because he will retake with the pawn instead, hitting the bishop with the pawn, then if we take, it's even. Uh, what am I missing here? I'm missing something. It can't be it can't be that straightforward. This is what I'm missing. Oh look at that, Debanka. We're on the exact same page there. You're right, we gotta watch out for this rook on C1, because after uh 
after retake that's it so in that case we're just going to change the order in which we make the moves a little bit we're still going to take with the bishop so we're going to go takes he's going to take or sorry he's going to take with the pawn maybe and then we exchange here before taking the bishop leaving the defensible square now, taking with the um knight's a bit disastrous Should be this, just making sure. One uh, key thing to note here is that we're currently in opposition, so if we can create an end situation on this pawn chain where it's his move, we get to, he either has to go left or right, and in which case we go the other way. So it's not this, because takes is too, it's too fast. I take here, and then he can enter the square of my pawn and pick it up. So my goal is now to create an in situation where opposition is in my favor. Two ways to do this. I can uh, take, he takes, I push the pawn. Or uh, we can push the pawn. Doesn't work because then he pushes here and then we have to move to the side and he infiltrates. This way. So takes is correct. Song always gives me Final Fantasy 7 vibes. Hmm. What do on this one? What do? A little worried about this, followed by this. Oh, hey, this move's not a reality because we got that covered. Yeah, exactly, Krajibul. Very close to that slum song. Great tune, though. Great tune. I guess just going e7 here works pretty good. Because we're threatening uh, rook f8, uh, doing a fork here. Uh, and also, if he moves the bishop away, we get to take his rook. If he takes the queen, we go up material. So, as is often the case, pushing the pawn looks very desirable. Gotta be. Okay, this is complicated. So we're under check and we just had a discovered attack happen on our rook. We are also, however, hitting his queen. So moving this way or this way would be very bad because then he gets to take with check. So we're just going to assume that the first move is king a2. Uh, I, I guess I could also take here. But no, then he still gets to take with check. And then we go down the exchange because after he takes and I move to a2 anyways, then he moves his queen out of the way. So... The move is king a2. Uh, he might even try this. Let me go here. 
Yeah, okay, A2. We're cruising right now. What's my all-time high puzzle rating? I guess we're there right now. I thought it was 2400 at some point. Well, close enough. I really don't care about rating on puzzles, just a curiosity. This is looking pretty good. Because if he uh, retakes, we have this. After he retakes with the king, though, not so much. create some sort of back rank threat. Uh, no, I can't. So if I was in a game I had to make a move quickly, it'd probably be uh, Rook DG8. But after G3, then what? I guess there's a possibility after g3 of taking here uh, and then if he retakes with the pawn we take with the other rook and then he can't take with the pawn no he just takes with the queen then and then we take here uh, then he has queen bishop rook versus our queen and bishop that's no good is there some advantage to taking here first None that I can see. This one's got me, um, puzzled. <laughs> Looking at this right now, because after it retakes and pushing the pawn, the queen is running very low on squares to defend this rook on. So it has to go here or here. Oh, hey, there's a double attack here. So after taking and retaking and pushing, we're hitting the rook and we're hitting the queen. Okay. 
And then we take the rook. Is that right? Takes. Takes, takes. Push. Ooh, maybe not. Let's slow this down for a moment. We're going to take here and end up up a, a minor piece. My initial gut reaction to play here ends really badly because takes, 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 push. And then if I go here, uh, we have take with the immediate threat of going here. And we don't have an extra move to get behind the pawn or in front of the pawn. Uh, and this still remains a threat even if we slide in front. <laughs> Alright, best move for white. Can I create a hook-style checkmate here? Maybe. Check. Check. This is looking like almost the sure thing for the first move. Very limiting move. Might just be a matter of who promotes first. I'm going to go for uh, rook g6, I think. Darn. Oh, the move I didn't consider. Well, there you go, then. What right, was the follow-up here? Aha. That's dirty. Swing and a miss on that one. That'll happen. I think this one goes check, push the pawn. Seems like a pretty tactical winner because if he takes the rook, I take his rook and promote. And if he moves his rook, I take his rook. And then if he takes, I promote. Do I just push right now, in fact? Is that any better? Maybe there's no issue with pushing now before a check. I mean, check just gets them further into our position. Yeah, we do need to check first. Uh, it's just better material-wise, because if I push here and let's say uh, he takes, 
and then I take, and then he takes. Then he's just have a bishop. So I gotta remove the uh, the defender here, or remove the attacker. Little diversion. That's a very good point on that last puzzle. Red uh, Romp uh, knows that checking moves the rook away from d8 on that last puzzle. It's a good point. Good point. Not seeing uh, like a clear winner of a move here for me. King F2 looks interesting just because it attacks the knight twice, but at the end of all that, we're still pinned on this pawn, so this becomes a major weakness. So kind of the best looking move is here, but after he retakes or even takes here, there's not a winner for me. Hmm. Zealous, he shifts queen f4. Uh, what is your plan after queen f4? I see f takes e4 after queen f4. Oh, I guess we'd take here, huh? Okay, so if we went queen f4, knight h5. Bunos points out that there's a fork on B3. That is true. Very true. Okay. Uh, I think Bunos is on it, so we take, take, knight here, threatening the queen, and also threatening the fork on b3. I think that's the best we're going to do here. Well spotted. Got reactions to move the king to the side, but I think this is a queen sacrifice. And then, uh, 
After he takes back, we take here with surprise check, also hitting the queen. And then we're up one piece of material at the end of that. Seems good. Can we do better? Yeah, if we don't if we don't take the bishop right now, he's just gonna castle. Has to be it. All right. We have check here, check here. Got a pass pawn on the outside, so that lets us know this is pretty serious. There's not, uh, not much time. We gotta make a good move. Or face the consequences. Something I've been trying to do on my puzzles lately, which has been somewhat successful, has been uh, trying to take a few moments to study the board state past my own move, thinking about what are the threats of the enemy. Because there's often a very big clue inside the puzzle, like if you're uh, at a weak back rank or they have a far advanced pawn, that can let you know uh, how serious of a move you're actually looking to make. What other kind of action can we do here? Because the checks look pretty, uh, pretty weak. Blev suggests possibly rook a8. I think that's, that's looking pretty good. So with rook a8, if he takes the rook, then we get check, and then we pick up the rook as well. And if he takes with the bishop, then we pick up the rook for free. Might still be kind of a drawish ending, but it does seem a, a way forward in the position. Let's let's give Rook A to go. I think it looks nice. Okay, Bishop uh, F. Six was not a move I was thinking, but I think we double down on that same strategy here. I think we go here now. And if he retakes, we pick up the rook, and he can take with the rook. So if he goes here, we get that same exchange, check, moves the king, and we pick up the rook again. Okay. We're just going to push the pawn here because he does not have this square to defend. And if he moves here, we just promote. If he goes here, we go here. Less of a threat than it seems, because after this we can go here, and... He will retake here with check. Huh.
It's okay, we'll still pick up this bishop at the end. No. Alright. Oh, sneaky. Should have just looked at that for another second. I gotta say, Queen H5 is looking pretty devastating here. It's going like this. He has no way currently with this pawn existing to get back in here, so... We're gonna go Queen H5 now, because if we don't make this move immediately, like if we try to exchange here first, then he takes and he opens this up. Whereas right now, having this bishop here, even though we leave our own bishop hanging, is a major thorn because he needs to spend one tempo in order to move it out of the way so he can move this out of the way so he can move the queen over. Okay, I didn't look at that move. Here we are. The move still Queen H6. I think it might actually be Bishop H6 here. How does this consolidate down, though? This went from me being certain to me being very unclear. Okay, bishop h6. He's not going to move the rook over then. Hmm. Got to be another way forward. Oh, okay, here's a, here's an idea. Here's an idea. We go here. Uh, then he goes here. And then... We take here. And if he retakes, then we have a fork on this and this. Just not quite it. Thinking Queen H6 has to be because it's like a forcing maneuver. I'm just going to go here. Okay, now what? <laughs> Aha! Takes, takes, push, threatening the rook and the queen. I was uh, neglecting looking at this bishop. Oh, looks like a few people in uh, chat had some great ideas on that one. I wasn't looking for that puzzle, but thank you. All right, this one's going to be uh, it's called a shouldering maneuver. And uh, we're going to take here. He's going to go over. We're going to go down. He's going to take my pawn. Then we're going to slide to this square. And when he moves down, I'm going to move here. 
and then he has no way out because he's locked into these three squares with me and then we're free to push this pawn Do have to be careful about some uh, stalemate techniques here, but with the amount of moves he has to make to get his king pinned and get this uh, pawn pushed up, we'll promote then and be able to finish it off. There's a Max Lange's mate here. issue I'm running into here is that when this rook moves, uh, this is happening. Also, our rook is very much hanging right now. So that means there's going to be a more forcing maneuver I need to find. Okay, we're going to check here first. And if he moves here, um, we can slam this move. Then he goes here, and then we have uh, this for checkmate. Yes, yeah, checkmate. So he's going to have to go this way, and then I can go back here, check and pick up the rook that way. Yeah, he cannot go to F8 without getting checkmated. That's not the move? Why not? Okay. Okay, that's what I was missing. And then we get the mate here. All right, I missed that pattern. Fair enough. Fair enough. having a hard time imagining not being a move like this to open up this here. Yo, Dark Sphere, you had the line there. Nice. Also look at this here, and then after uh, takes takes threatening the fork here, we have this as well. I don't know. Knight takes d5 looks good. My issue with knight takes d5 is I don't see the line all the way through, which makes me concerned that I'm going to miss it. I also point out our knight's hanging right now, so 
That's it. I believe knight takes d5 is the most forcing move because it is immediately threatening to take on e7 and forking the king and the queen. Okay, I'm going to go for it. Okay, he took that way. Okay, now we have a check here, or we can move our knight. Could also sacrifice the rook, but I don't see that working out, because I'll just take here, and then I think he's somewhat stable. Okay, after uh, this check, he only has one square remaining that's here. There's got to be something better than that check. If this rook wasn't here, that'd be great, because then we could slide in for checkmate, but it is. It is there indeed. What am I missing here? It's got to be something rather basic, in fact. Well, I'm about ready to slam the move Queen G3, because I don't really see any way that we move forward that's not that. There we are. Okay. Perhaps it's check, and then after this moves, we have an additional check here. Ah. Uh. Why me brain hurt? I'm going to eat uh, some eggs and a piece of toast real quick while I think about this. I like the suggestion of a rook lift, Celesty. I think that could very well be it. Perhaps after checking here and they take... Um... Oh, taking here is pretty devastating because then we can go up and over. Uh, if queen h4, he can just take here, and then he's got a defender. I guess he can never move this rook right now because of this. He's got to take the knight first. I'm liking the idea right now of um, knight g6 checks. If he takes here, and then I retake with the pawn... He's in an immense amount of trouble. Can't move the rook over because of checkmate on this square. I'm going to keep stewing this one while I um, eat this two eggs and toast. One moment.
that's a good idea, Catalix. But uh, King can retake on G8. You're just a uh, very common maneuver to sacrifice the queen next to the king. We need a, a defender on the G8 square for the queen. Good thought, though. Don't call this camp bready spaghetti for nothing. She loves bread. Sweetest cat you ever met when you got a piece of bread in hand. Uno suggests knight f7 to force take with the rook. What's the advantage of the rook taking here? pretty convinced on knight g6, though I don't see the end of the line after queen e8. I'm gonna I'm gonna push knight g6 here. All right. Now we're gonna take on g6, which really puts his king in a pickle. And then we're gonna check here. Has to be this. Then we're gonna rook lift to e3 or d3. This is what I didn't see afterwards. I still don't see it. Okay, well, let's just say in this position, there's no way that the move isn't queen h6. It stops there. Please show me the rest, Stockfish. Yo, mommy, yeah, thanks for 26 months. Appreciate that a lot. Not a spider. So sorry for missing you earlier. Thanks so much for 78. My apologies, dude. Okay, yes, but after this, he's going to go here. And then we go back. Why wouldn't we just go to D3 to begin with? Excusey? Oh, because he can defend this square. All right, let's uh, back it up again. So we go here, he goes here, we go here. Why not here now? Okay, okay. See, this is the piece I was missing at the end. That was a very tough puzzle. I'd love to go here. Is there a reason I don't want to do that right now? Oh, we're kind of hanging here. Takes, takes, check. Can just block or retreat. We do have this pass pawn, though. I think a very important note uh, looking at this position is that this pawn is blocking the main defensive square to stop the pawn from promoting. So in order to reach the defensive square, you'd have to go here, then here, then to block this. 
So... Takes... Takes... Check... If he retakes with the king, he's not in time. Retakes with the bishop, it's pinned, so we can't move it out of the way. Now, uh, I think the complication I'm seeing from my current plan is that he's just going to retreat the rook back to f2. And then I'm kind of stuck. What if I go queen here, and then I go here? No, he's still got pressure on this pawn, so it almost seems imperative that I'm taking the queen first, or at least removing the possibility of this threat before I do anything else. So, takes, and then he retreats the queen. I take, he takes, I check, and he's already on the line to stop my pawn. Okay. Why is life so hard? I feel like the solution to this puzzle is less about crushing uh, the advantage and more about getting this pawn promoted because of this uh, complication. What if we remove his main defense by just guarding this rank rather than checking? Like, go takes, takes, rook b2. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere. Because then this square is covered, he can't block the uh, defended square. Um... Takes, takes, rook b2. No, okay, here we go, here we go. Takes, takes, push. Rook f2, rook b2. His problem being that he can't unpin this back rank, so we're threatening push and then check. And his only place to come back to defend also blocks his king in from leaving. Okay. Had to push the pawn first, or it just didn't happen. Okay. Well, it seems like this would be correct. Then he's going to go... Here. Not quite. Maybe after that we do this. It's looking pretty promising. This has been a heck of a set of puzzles, man. Oh, the queen's hanging. So we take the queen, and then after this, we... Push the pawn. Now you can't defend both. Yeah, pushing to d3 after the uh, knight takes back. 
Um, complicates us a lot, because if he takes here, then we take here, and we're promoting next move, and he can't defend. Um, and if he takes here, then we push the pawn, same deal. Uh, this is the square we need to get the pawn to, two squares away from the knight, so it takes three moves. Yeah, we're getting a promotion after that. Yep, taking the knight with promotion threat was also good there, but it just wasn't best, as is often the case in puzzles. Listen here, bready spaghetti style kitty. I don't have any more bread, so you can leave now. at the end of this, we're forking the rook. So I want to be keenly aware that this exists after the rook moves, though right now that's not very beneficial. This right now is an honest-to-goodness checkmate threat as well. Oh wait, no it's not. Life's hard when you're not paying attention. Okay, well, I mean, just looking at the options we've exhausted here, Rook C1 is going to be the start. Which leaves uh, one move right here. And then it's a matter of which check do we want from there. Yeah, funny when that happens, Ransom. Only four, four major pieces on the board. It's missed the defense. Happens to the best of us, which is certainly not me. running into a brick wall here because after checks moves let's just say check here it's gonna push right Okay, so since that's not working, I should look at what White is doing now. Um, White does not have a direct checkmate threat. They're like a couple moves away from a major threat. Like they gotta go here and here. Or just here. Or here and here, whatever. But they're not, they're not one move away from a major threat. So, it means we have more time. So after this pawn gets pushed, the king's on this square. If we can get our queen back here, that's checkmate. So perhaps we're going uh, here. He goes here. We check. He pushes. Then we slide up here. Um, that does create an imperative threat on this square. Whereas he can only check once and then create a threat. 
that has to be the way forward. Oh, there you have it. Cyan Giraffe saw that one. Nice work, dude. Okay, knight's hanging. Bishop's also hanging. So... If we take with the knight, this is happening. Game's over. So that ain't gonna be it. Can somebody explain to me why my kitty is so grumpy today? Excuse me. I've given you two two morsels of bread. Don't be so grumpy. Hey, you got me pretty good there. That was my fault, though. I agree. I agree. What a good kitty. Probably grumpy because I'm her dad. That's fair. That's fair. Well, retreating here looks okay, but what's the follow-up to that? You know, Taco Bowl, G5 does look fun. Let's take a look at that. G5. That stops the attack on the knight, and the knight is still defending the F7 square. The rook has to move somewhere, and then we take here. The rook can also not move to defend uh, the bishop, because the knight is covering, in which case they lose the attack. I think g5 looks really promising, Taco Bowl. Yeah, what a good grumpsy kitsy. Alright, let's go for g5. I like it. It's not that move. What was it? Okay. And then after takes... Okay, we just follow up the attack. It's the same idea. Just not as weakening. So what is the, the follow-up to... g5? Ah, I see. They just slide the rook over. Fair play. Fair play. There's got to be something pretty tech here. Uh, knight g4 is looking most tempting, because we'd lock off this square, and we check. So that would leave him two moves here or here. No. One more time. If we go here, he's got two moves here or here. Yeah, it does put a damper on our situation. Seems like a pretty decent goal to get this pawn pushed. That's that's the best. This is the best part of our position right now. Okay, we also have surprise check here, so we could pick up this pawn that we wanted. 
The downside to picking up this pawn right here is we're, um, we're freeing up his bishop, which is, uh, at the moment, not doing so hot. Perhaps we reverse the order here. So we, we now know we can take on c4 with surprise check. Maybe rather than follow up, uh, follow up here, we try to lure a piece into a fork. Where is this? D2, D2. Looks like several piece, people were uh, much faster to me than that solution. Nice work, everybody. Oops, that's a mouse wheel. So if we take, he takes. That's a factual. So after it takes, takes, sliding the rook over here does trap the bishop, but after he sacrifices and goes, here's our, our rook is misplaced on the back rank and his is very active, so I think that's a losing endgame. Almost very tempting here is just to take the pawn um, and then work my way over to this bishop, because where is it going to go? It's going to go here. Could also start with a check, but after he goes here and then here, we're not really making any headway. See if we bring our king out right now. Um, I think he just slides behind the pawn. It's tough. Man, I don't really see a good move for black here. Sure, they exist. Since we're we're down uh, two pawns, well, we have one extra pawn for the bishop. Seems tough. I kind of think just taking here works good, and then if he checks, I move over. I think rook takes c2 is the is the way. No, we all do red arrow rob. Everybody misses tactics all the time. It's a lot easier doing puzzles. Um because at least in a puzzle you know there's a, a, a quote winning sequence, right? In your game, you're usually just thinking, like, how can I improve my pieces? Uh, what's my plan? What's my enemy's plan? You're not thinking, oh, there's a game-winning tactic on the board right now. Well, rook takes c2 is the most promising move for me right now, but it, even with that said, I'm not, like, a big fan of it. I'm just thinking we can gobble up all the pawns right now.
The only other option I see other than rook takes c2 is rook takes d1. And then after he takes, we go for this bishop. But again, after he sacrifices, and then I retake, and then he slides the rook behind my pawn here or here, that feels pretty bad. Let's take a look at these checks, huh? So check, he goes here. Check, he goes here. And then we have no follow-up check because it's protected. And we can force a draw right now with the rook. Okay, here, here's an idea. Check. And then we eventually check him over one square and then take, so that we're threatening to, to back rank mate. Let's give this a try. So now we check here. And now we take. Okay. Whew. Looks like we got there about the same time, Flez. Uh, excellent idea. I gotta say, I think Rook endgames are one of my big weaknesses in chess. I gotta work on those, and I am, but uh, I, those, I find them very difficult uh, to maneuver around. Rook and games are surely some of the most complicated material in chess, though. Should should be uh, it feels like it should be pretty straightforward because they move in a straight line, but it's like one wrong move is really bad in a rook and game. Be very precise to execute. Okay, I think the move here is King H4. That's what my gut tells me. King h4 uh, sets us up for uh, infiltrating here. So after going king h4, he cannot allow me to go king g6. So he's going to go king f6. At which point... I push here. And then he has to push a pawn, and then I push the other pawn. Either way. But this pawn being too, uh, too back allows us to have a reserve tempo. Let me just take a look at push here real quick. Uh, push... Takes... Takes also looks nice. Hmm... Yeah, okay, the, the kind of the issue with pushing this pawn is the issue with pushing a pawn at any point in the game is it creates a weakness behind it. Maybe not. Like, what if he just ignores this and goes, let's say, here? And then I push again. And then he just kind of alternates between these two squares, and I'm never able to really make progress after he pushes here. I guess we would get out eventually. If I can get this pawn up here, he can never um, leave the edge of the board. Okay, here's a problem with the plan I just had, too, is after I go here and here, if I step any further, uh, this pawn becomes loose. It just runs. This is looking a lot better now. But is there a move we make before that? Yeah, it's a really good point, Flez, that that uh, maneuver with taking the C2 pawn threatening mate, we can uh, continue making that threat over and over again. 
So we'd eventually pick up the bishop and all the pawns. A very good point. Okay, I'm now thinking e5 is the correct move. This pawn is the problem I'm trying to solve right now. Huh. Okay, I'm going to push e5. Not the move. King h4? Dang it. My initial plan was best. Yep, alright. I could never take this pawn, though. Let's just see here. Oh, okay. I get it now. I wasn't seeing uh, undermining the defender for this pawn. Okay. I get it. I like that we have a pin going here, but I don't see how to exploit it. Maybe I do. What if I sacrifice here right now, and then when he retakes with the king, I have a double check? And if he doesn't retake with the king, I get a rook. So let's assume king retakes here. Double check. And if the king goes here, he's, <laughs> he's in trouble. I think even just this is a very uh, rudimentary and very aggressive threat. Perhaps then taking with the pawn first makes more sense, because he can retake with this pawn, and if he retakes with this one, we have this one while the piece is protected. I think pawn takes g6 is looking quite good. Let's take a look at chat here. Rook takes e7 is uh, certainly not shabby. Gets us up one pawn because after takes takes. The only thing I don't like about that line is it passes the ball back to... Uh, Black, so they can do like check or something and kind of stabilize. This almost seems too good to be true, right? It has to be uh, F takes G6. And now what? Ah, okay, we're going to take here, then take here. Hmm. 
The other option being bishop takes f7. Probably not. This is... See, this doesn't actually provide that much of a threat because the bishop's covering the square. This rook's out of squares, though. There's nowhere to go. Alright, well this one's soon to be a uh, pawn endgame. We're gonna take the queen. Let's just try to uh, math this one out, huh? Alright, so here we go. Here we go. We're gonna move up towards the pawn. He's gonna push here. We're gonna slide up, and then I believe we do the same thing where we undermine the defender here. Uh, I should also probably keep these Tempe in reserve. Since his queen is pinned to the king, uh, maybe it's better to move the king up right now as we're not in a true rush to exchange this off. The problem with that being it's still the same amount of moves. I suppose by moving the king first, uh, it allows us to exchange and then move the king, forcing this move. Whereas if I take right now and move the king, he's got more options. So uh, king f2 would be the more forcing of the two. No. Okay. What am I missing here? Oh, that's a beautiful move. Okay. Because that blocks off this square, blocks off the defender. And then after we pick this up, we can push here, creating a barrier for uh, the Black King. A missed idea, but a very cool move. I feel like the Black King is going to get mated here. Let's take a look at what Black is doing. Let's point out that they have a very clear and direct threat of Queen E1 checkmate. These squares are covered and the Queen covers the rest. So it's going to be a forcing sequence. We have uh, two real checks here. We have queen uh, e5 and we have knight g6. Queen e5 looks a lot better because there's much less squares for the enemy king. Black Queen probably got here by taking the Rook on A1 and then sliding over and taking this one. Let's find out. Indeed, so Black missed checkmate on this move is how it got there. Which is very natural. You say, ooh, free piece. Oh, never mind, because the Rook would take there. Did not miss checkmate. That's exactly how it got there. Let's take a look at this game real quick. All right.
What I like about uh, Queen E5 is it only leaves one square for the enemy king. And then we can check here. And when the king gets here to this square, we have Bowden's mate. Okay. That sorts it out for me. Okay, I was not expecting the block on the king here. Is It's probably just take, but what if it's not? I'm thinking knight takes g6 is actually what it is here. Let's think it through. So if I go here, uh, that leaves this square for the king, and no matter where I check from, the bishop gets to block. No, we take here, the, the king moves over, we have this move. Boy, this is messy. Okay, it's gotta be take here. Let's follow this all the way down, okay? Yep, check. That's right, because now the square is covered. I'm gonna go here. Alright, so not quite ending in checkmate. But we do remove the defenders of this these squares, so this is no longer a checkmate threat. Very good. Let's check on that last one uh, for you, Ancelor. I'm not quite sure. So, uh, we asked why not check the white king with the bishop? You mean here? Or here? I'm lost in the sauce on this one. Yes, yes, the reason is this right here is the threat. Uh, this looks like a push right here. We definitely are not going to take because then he retakes the opposition and then he can just go back this way and eat up our pawns. So pushing has to be the maneuver. push when he goes here then we slide up and we're going to reach the key square a7 we can't afford to push right now though because we're blocking off this square uh if we go uh here right now then he can get in front and we have an issue oh my god really oh sons of a guns i was wrong i was wrong that'll happen go back here. I go here. He goes here. I go here. Push. Push. He goes up. I go up. Push. Okay, so after I push, he doesn't have to slide back. We can just get a mutual promotion, and then that's that. So actually, in fact, how this would go is we go push, he would go here, uh, then I'd have to slide up, uh, and then he'd push the pawn, push, push, 
promote promote without check very important okay just wanted to see that one all the way through Okay, on this board state, this square is covered for the bishop, and we're also covering this square to stop the pawn. So the remaining piece stopping our pawn from promoting is the knight on c2. So I think the move rook d4 looks very desirable here, because after rook d4, if he goes back up, we can fork the, uh, the king and the knight. And if he moves anywhere else, then we get to promote our pawn. Seems like at the very worst, um, this happens and then takes takes. And this is fine, because takes, takes, push. And he's not in time to defend the c1 square. Alright, very quick restroom break for me. Thanks for your patience during this very short intermission. Thank you all for your suggestions and conversation. They've been a very uh, productive puzzle session. Alrighty. All right, what's going on here? is it? Taking here first looks very nice. We not, though. Thinking that if we can eventually weasel into this square, we're threatening a fork here too.
Take with the queen, he just retakes with the knight. This one should be simple. I'm missing something very basic here. Darn brain. I don't know. Bishop takes f3 is looking best right now, I think. Yo, Salty Hyde, thanks so much for 65 months. Much appreciation, dude. Thank you. Queen F5. Queen F5 threatening uh, Knight D4. And then if he pushes here, we take, he takes, and we still go to Knight D4, hitting both the Queen and the Bishop. Seems promising. Yeah, I think f5 looks nice, because if we go to h4, then the bishop's going to end up on this diagonal. Um, or we don't have we don't have knight d4 anymore. Let's try. That's not it. What's the solution here? <laughs> it was bishop. My gut was right. Okay. And then what if he takes my queen? Oh, right. There's a fork right here. Swing and a miss. That would definitely do it. This one looks like checkmate in two to me. Check has to take... Oh, never mind. No checkmate there. Okay, takes, takes, check. Nope. There's got to be a checkmate here. I guess if we go check first, and then he has to has to take right, and then we take here. Um, it's not quite enough. Where is it? My brain keeps being drawn to knight c7 for the initial check, but after rook takes... We can't just take the rook, but we're not up material. We're, we're pretty, um, we're already down a full rook. Two full rooks, in fact. Oh, that tells me that for sure this needs to be a checkmate.
thinking this kind of should start with bishop takes um e6 this does threaten mate so it's also very forcing but eventually we should be able to bring the knight to the spot the queen's into check this way all right that was not the move i was expecting Where is it? Let's just look at check here. Takes. Check. Here. Check. Goes back. It's not quite it now, is it? Yeah, Knight G, E7 was not the move I expected, but probably the correct defense. Okay, out of the remaining moves, bishop d7 check, queen d7 check, and... Okay, let's try queen d7 check. I think this looks pretty promising. So we can go queen d7 check. Um... He has to go here. Check. And if he moves over, he gets checkmated, so he's got to take back with the knight. And then we have... <laughs> no, we don't have that. Man. Maybe bishop takes here is a, a move. It does work, because after removing this defender, if he retakes with the knight, we have check. <laughs> check, checkmate. Okay, this works, they have to go f8 too. So if we go here and they go d8, then we go here, discover check, and then, uh, in fact, checkmate there. So this forces f8. This puzzle hurts my brain. Okay, okay. Uh, we're gonna go here, they're gonna go here, we're gonna remove the defender of this square. This knight's also pinned, so there's just nothing to do. Bless it, that was like... That was a brain buster. Let's just watch here. Okay, so that's the move. Okay, I, I was looking at this, and it says, no, that's not the move. Let's we'll see what this ends up as. Wow. Okay, so it wasn't even a checkmate. Uh, let's take a look at this real fast. And after he retakes here... Oh yeah, because after a queen takes, he still goes there. Wow. Amazing. 
I think uh, the overall failure for me on that puzzle was attempting to force a checkmate that didn't exist. All right, well, the, the, the moves here, I think, are going to be either h6 or h takes g6. I think I like h takes g6 more. What would be another option here? Uh, rook f3. One thing I'm sure is I don't want to give up this square to check, because if we do that, we're going to end up in some sort of perpetual here. Taking here and then going down with the queen's a very credible threat. Check, checkmate. So he almost has to retake there. So do have some checkmate ideas on the back rank uh, do this doubled pawn, but we're not in position to get over there. Could definitely take here. Uh, retaking would be very painful. Oh yeah, if we take here and he takes back with the pawn, we got this, which is good. I'm going to say h takes g6 has to be the way forward here. How could it not be? Now I think rook f3 looks really good because he's got to move the queen away and when he does then we can take here forcing a pawn retake which is really bad for him. Uh, takes, 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 does not quite work, so he just slides back. I want to do GX, or G takes F7, that keeps screaming at me, but it's not right. Yes, rook f3 does allow queen h4. That's a, a very valid concern.
What about takes, takes, and then take? That looks pretty good. I think F or G takes F7 seems like the most promising continuation. Okay. Um, now I'm either taking here, um, threatening if he takes the king to fork, or if he retakes the pawn, we have check, check, checkmate. Or can go here now. Okay, rook f3 is also a possibility now, because if he goes queen h4 check, we can take back because the bishop's pinned. Everything in my chess instinct says to bring the queen to g6, but I don't see uh, a valid follow-up after that. The problem with a lot of the lines I'm looking at here uh, going up this way is at the end of that again he has a perpetual check between h4 and e1. Rook F3 is looking mighty juicy. Queen G6 before leads to that same perpetual so it kind of has to be rook f3 it's not the move what is it okay bishop takes okay pawn takes is what i was against here so take check here <laughs> okay yeah that's the move i was gonna find that was the one. Totally the move I was going to find. Seems very unlikely a uh, bishop or queen takes c4 is not the start to this. Yeah, we would have won the endgame in that line, but, uh, you know, I was looking for something a little bit more than that. Kind of has to be as an unobstructed check. Now we're going to go queen e6, double defending this pawn, and threatening check, check, take with promote with check.
do believe the move is just straight up here. Queen e8. Seems the only viable continuation, then we're basically trading the rook for a pawn. Hmm. True. That is a, that is a thing we could do. Excuse me. Yo, Pickle Dude, thanks for 60 months. Appreciate that five years. Thank you. Well, we are down oodles of material here. What a tough position for our pieces. So let's say at the end of whatever line, if uh, uh, white's able to exchange the queen for the rook, they're up a full rook for our two pawns plus three. Looking at bishop takes f2, I don't see where that leads. Got all sorts of pieces to block with. Feels like it's got to be forced just due to the um, pieces on board. I think we have to begin with rook takes a8 so we don't do rook takes a8 and embolden our threat on the back rank here uh <laughs> there's not really a way to get more out of the position so takes takes what i'm gonna look at first here then we have perhaps this getting into trouble here. They don't have a good check after we move here, though. There's no um, no immediate check that's protected. All right, let's start with that. This is also open now. This is going to be it, though. No? Here? Here? 
All right. It's true. Tuffy right there. I guess on that one, I was expecting something more due to the material difference at the beginning of the puzzle. I don't see how I wouldn't start with taking the queen. We're here. Let's just say he takes the rook. Push. Over. We're not getting promoted in that sequence. Okay, I see. So takes, takes, check. I wanted him to go here, but he can go here instead. Hmm. <laughs> Didn't mean to click there. Let's just try what we were thinking. What is it? Oh, okay. So going to D8 removes this possibility because of the skewer. I was looking at the skewer from checking from this square, but this makes more sense because it removes uh, it removes the remaining square for his retreat. Maybe starting here or here. Also, this. I'm liking uh, Queen D1 because it's the most forcing of the moves as far as checks go. But Queen B5 is an unblockable check, but it leaves him a lot more options. He can move lots of places. Also have this check. I didn't look at that. Just forking the king and knight, or rook and queen will not quite do. Got this move. I want to feel like this ends with forking the rook and king or king and queen with the knight after capturing on one of these squares, right? So if we get the king to either of the squares, then we have a we have a fork on the next move. We also have an outside pass pawn, so that's a thing.
gonna think on this for like one more minute, and then I'm gonna make a move, and I think it's gonna be my last puzzle for today. I think the old noodle is taxed. It's been a very good session, though. We're up about uh, 200 rating points on puzzles. If we could get the king to this square, that'd be nice as well. Let's take a look here. So check. If he goes here, that's checkmate, so that's not gonna happen. Um he can't go here or here. So he has to go here or here. Let's assume he goes here, because that's more annoying for me. That ends up with us checking on this square again. Yeah, it's been good, Baker Staunch. Uh, gonna make a playlist for next time we play. Uh, it's a very common music stuttering issue in the game, which I'm gonna alleviate by making a playlist. It's been a blast so far, though. What am I missing right here? All right, I'm gonna take a guess. Not the move. Okay, so it was F5. Let's see. Now we go for the fork. Okay, I wasn't getting that one and that's okay. That's okay. All right, the old noodle, I believe, is taxed for the day. Thank you all for a very excellent early stream. I had a lot of fun playing uh, City Skylines and Chess today. Uh, hope you all enjoyed it as well. We'll be back and at it uh, again very soon for some more fun. Uh, thanks for the great time, wonderful company, and awesome conversation. As a reminder, going to run three minutes worth of ads here on the way out. The only ads I play for my entire broadcast. Just thanks so much for the great time and wonderful company once again. Appreciate you all. Enjoy these very sleepy kitties on our outro. We'll catch you again soon. Thanks so much.